It was a case, as you know, we thought had gone ice cold, but now shocking developments last weekend have thrust Natalie Holloway back onto the front pages here in the U.S. and around the globe. Secretly recorded videotape has revealed the young Aruban man, long thought to be the suspect, to be a callous and indifferent lowlife. Shocked and outraged, Natalie's mother Beth joins me now, along with Dutch crime reporter Peter DeVries, who caught Joran van der Sloot confessing to a hideous crime. You know, I don't know whether to give you my condolences or my congratulations with these revelations. I mean, how are you taking it? Is it an awful blow? Is it a, a closure of some sort? Well, if I if I look at if I take to you know, for like it's, it's kind of like it's weighted. If I have to look at the not knowing versus the knowing, of course, the knowing is difficult, and especially to hear the words coming from Iran as being uh, how he's gosh, just a despicable form of a human being anyway, and what he's saying, but. But Geraldo, the, the not knowing is the sheer hell. And I think that every parent just is, would have that constant daily torture of that not knowing what has happened to their child or a loved one. So if I have to wait them, I mean, of course I'd have to say the knowing is where I find the peace and comfort. Because this is what I have been wanting for so long is the answers as to what happened. The shock, though, of actually seeing him saying those words when Peter showed you that video, your reaction was visceral, it was emotional, it must be something you'll never forget. Oh, I wanted to come through the TV and I wanted to kill him and I would have peeled his skin off his face, yes. The fact that he said that she went into these tremors, this trembling, mm -hmm. now I remember your saying that the Dutch police or the Aruban police asked you at the time when you first arrived in Aruba whether or not she had any kind of ailments or afflictions, uh, epilepsy, things of that nature that would make her tremble, that would make her shudder, that would make her go through those. What did they know then about this or is it an eerie coincidence that he mentions her going through those symptoms? You know, we've really tried to be so careful in Natalie's investigation is to just stick with the known facts. And it is a known fact that the only medical question that they did ask us, the only one question as far as the medical issue, was does Natalie have a history of epilepsy or seizures? And that was in the 48 hours of her disappearance. So, you know, we just have to lay the facts out there. And they, they kind of speak pretty loudly that if we hear that within 48 hours of her disappearance and we take it two and a half years later, and I think when I, not only just to hear Yaron say this, but I even see him imitate her body actions as she's suffering. Oh, so I'm thinking, you know, it's hard, it's hard not to try to put those two together. They must have heard some kind of admission somewhere along yeah, the line. I mean, that, that's the unavoidable conclusion I come to. But we'll come back to that point. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, uh, you, you know, it takes one to know one. That was a hell of a job of undercover reporting there. Uh, on Friday afternoon in the Netherlands, a Reuben police again questioned Joram van der Sloot, who claimed that everything he told your man, everything he told this Patrick character, was because he was stoned, that he was wasted on, uh, on marijuana provided by, by Patrick the informant. Your response to Joram saying, don't believe my, my lying mouth because I'm stoned, or I was stoned at the time. Yeah, well, my response is simple. It's the only thing he can say, because otherwise, otherwise he is going right away into jail. So he has to say this, but it is incredible, it's unbelievable, and it's unreliable. He said earlier, as I recall, that he was only conjuring up this fantasy because he, was wa he wanted to impress the older man, Patrick. Yeah, uh, I don't buy that either because nobody on the world is impressed by a story like that. A an innocent girl who is dumped into the ocean. You you're not going to impress anybody by that, so that's baloney. I've come to know this woman and her family very well and under very trying circumstance, and I, I am totally in her corner. The, the fact, though, is he didn't quite confess to a homicide, did he? No, he didn't confess a homicide, but what he did confess, and not only once or twice, but more than ten times, is that he was at the beach present when Natalie dies, and that he somehow panicked and wanted to get rid of the body and that's very important and of course we have to find out what happened really what is the death cause of Natalie we have to find out that but the fact that he admits now 
on tape that he was there, that's the key. His family are now professing to worry that Joran van der Sloot is suicidal. Your comment. Oh. It's hard for me to have uh, any sympathy or compassion for that, Geraldo. It just really is, I'll be honest. Uh, it's just not a concern of mine. And, uh, you know, I. Are they I can't conjuring help. it to generate sympathy where none should exist? Well, absolutely. I mean, I would think that that would certainly be something that that they would put out there because again it's always been about poor Yaron even himself as he's talking with Patrick he never expresses any true concern for Natalie and even to the point where if you are with a, a young woman and 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 this just transpiring your immediate instincts would be to scoop them up and to run with them somewhere if you were even seeking just help from the Marriott I mean he was so close by he could have just picked her body up just scooped her up and just take off running with her there would have been some medical personnel that have come and seeing if there's something that could have been done. He could have yelled help. Absolutely. He could have helped me, somebody he help me. He admits that on, during some of the um, taped admissions that he gives to Patrick that he says that he doesn't know if Natalie's alive or not. And, and of course, no, no 17 year old boy can determine whether a young female is, or, or a person, an individual is alive or not. I mean, Natalie didn't have, you know, we can never go back and recapture whether they disposed of her body while she's in a coma or while she's dead. I mean, we'll never be able to recapture that to know if she could have been benefited from some medical assistance. I want to take a break. I have professional to professional some hard questions for Peter about his informant Patrick and his background and what he knew when he knew it and also whether he believes uh, that everything is uh, is as supportable and as corroborated as, uh, as he suggested on his broadcast. We'll take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back.